Hi and welcome to this video. I made this PCG forest so I can create my own custom build forest in minutes in Unreal Engine. This PCG forest is available for everyone, just look for the link in the descriptions. In this video, I will give you an explanation on how to use this blueprint. So let's dive into this. First we enable the PCG plugin in Unreal. Go to your plugins and type in PCG. Check the check mark and Unreal will ask you to restart the program. I already checked the plugin, but if you didn't, then you will have to restart. Once you restart Unreal, we start with creating a new level. Go to File and make a new level. Choose for Empty Level, because we fill in our own lighting. By default, the level is black, because we have no lights. You can use the default lighting of Unreal, but for now I choose Ultra Dynamic Sky. You can buy this plugin on the Fab Marketplace. I recommend you to buy it, because it's a very powerful plugin. You can tweak a lot of stuff when it comes to real-time lighting. Drag the blueprint in and we have daylight. Now go to the selection mode in the top and select a landscape. Leave everything as it is and just click create. We have a landscape we can use to set our PCG forest. Go back to selection mode and now we can look for the PCG forest in the content browser. Go to the folder PCG forest and we see three blueprints here. Choose the one that says BP forest. Drag that into your viewport. We see a spline circle in the viewport, but it's currently empty. We don't see any assets, but we need to populate it. Click on the blueprint in the outliner. In the details panel below, you'll see the parameters that you can now fill in. By default, it's empty. But if you click on the drop-down menu, you can enter a new data asset. Select the grass data asset. And we still don't see anything appear in the viewport. Double-click on the data asset. You'll see the screen open. Then click on the plus icon. Now we can add a new mesh. I've downloaded several free assets from the Fab Marketplace that you can use to add to the data assets. Choose your own assets. It doesn't really matter which ones you use as long as they are static meshes. For the trees, I downloaded the European Beach, which is also available for free via Fab. Drag the grass mesh into the mesh input field. Now we see the grass appear in the viewport. On the details panel, you can then specify the distance between the grass instances and whether you want large chunks of grass or have it very densely packed. You can adjust the rotation and the scale of the grass. It's also possible to add another asset by clicking the plus icon. Let's add a few more assets to the grass. You can also specify the weight of the grass here meaning how much of the grass asset you want to display from the other assets. And you can specify the scale of the grass per asset. That's looking already pretty good. We have some random grass field we could be proud of. Now let's fill in the other data assets. Let's select the high grass data asset and fill in some assets from the content browser for the high grass and make it to your liking. Let's do this for the flowers as well. It's good to know that flowers can vary in size. That's why it's very useful now to specify the size per asset so that they are equal to each other. After that, in the details panel, you can scale the flowers as a group. Now we're going to fill in the trees. You can specify how many meshes you want to create per data asset. There's no further limit, but understand that too many meshes will slow down your PCG. Make sure it keeps working well. We already have quite a forest, a bit of grass, some tall grass, some flowers, and a few trees. That's already looking pretty good. Then we can put a few more bushes in and it will become even more beautiful. And to finish it off, we can add some rocks. You can then choose other props like mushrooms or beech nuts. You can always add your own assets, whatever you want. Our 
Our forest is already looking quite good. We can still add a few more things. We have two more data assets we can fill in. We can place some twigs here and there in our forest. We're going to put some leaves on the ground because that will make our forest even better. Now we have filled all our data assets and here is our forest. Looks really good, doesn't it? If you select our forest, you can make it larger with the spline. You can add points and you can determine the shape yourself. You can keep tweaking all the parameters in the details panel to make it exactly as you want it. If you go back to the content browser to the PCG folder and then forest, you can also use the other blueprints to customize your forest. So let's do that. With the blueprint mesh, you can remove or delete sections from the forest. By default, it inserts a cube, but you can also remove it. Then, it only removes the section where you've placed the cube. What you can also do is change the cube to something you want to insert yourself, like another asset, such as a cone or a statue. Then we have one blueprint left in the PCG forest folder, and that's the path road. So if you want a path through your forest, you can add this to your forest. Drag the blueprint into your forest. You can adjust the path as you wish using the anchor points. You can make a path wider or narrower, and you can make it run randomly through your forest. You can adjust this by selecting the blueprint and changing it in the details panel. And there we have it. We have a forest. Now you can make it pretty much however you want, with the right vibe, that perfect atmosphere, and the right colors. Just before I forget, if you delete everything, your path, your mesh, and the forest itself, you can drag them back in. If you drag them back in, you'll see they're completely empty again. But now, all the assets are filled, so if you select them again, you'll have your forest back by default. And then, you can use it for all your projects, game projects, or cinematic projects. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to hear your questions or reactions in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And hopefully, I'll see you again in another video.